This video is the first in a two-part series that will take a look at a Brian May style treble booster kit by Music Ding. Part 1 will cover the kit assembly and part 2 will give a demonstration of the pedal itself in action. Since you are here, it is probably apparent that you are a fan of Queen and the guitar playing style of Brian May. Essential to his unique tone is an effects pedal known as a treble booster. As its name implies, a treble booster accentuates the higher frequencies of an electric guitar tone and at the same time overdrives the signal. This video will cover a do-it-yourself Brian May style treble booster kit by Music Ding. Music Ding is a company based in Germany and offers a wide variety of guitar pedal and electronic musical project related paraphernalia. In terms of do-it-yourself pedal kits, they offer everything from modulation to distortion, fuzz and boosts. We are going to cover one pedal in particular a model they refer to as Der Mai, or the May. This treble booster is advertised as being able to replicate the unique pedal booster sound of the famous Queen guitarist. Available direct from their website, Music Ding offers all required components in order for you to build the pedal yourself. For only 13 euros, you can order just the base kit which includes all but an enclosure and knob. Knobs and enclosures are available from Music Ding as well. Check out their site directly. They have a lot of neat stuff. I ordered the basic treble booster kit. At home I had some knobs and an enclosure lying around. They ship the kit to you in a padded envelope. Shipping was fast despite the fact that I opted for the slowest option of Deutsche Post. I received the kit in just over one week in Canada. No brokerage fees and no customs issues. So let's take a look at the kit. Here we have the resistors. This is a bag of wire leads that they provide. This bag contains the foot switch, input output jacks, LED housing, 9 volt plug for AC connection, a 9 volt battery plug, circuit board adhesive fasteners, and enclosure feet. Here are the capacitors, LED and single transistor. This is the circuit board. Assembly of this kit requires that you have some basic soldering skills. This video will not cover how to solder as there are plenty of instructional videos of that sort available on YouTube. My soldering skills are extremely rudimentary so I assure you if I can assemble this kit then anyone can. Before we go on to the kit components, let us first take a look at the preparation of the enclosure. If you are like me and did not order a pre-drilled enclosure, then you will have to drill the holes yourself in your own enclosure. Holes will need to be drilled for the input-output jacks, the AC power jack, the foot switch, the volume pot, and the LED housing. It may be a good idea to lay the components in and on the enclosure to get an idea of the placement of the holes. A great way of drilling holes in the enclosure is to use a set of step drill bits. These drill bits contain several steps of various sizes to make holes in your enclosure. Before you begin, be aware that drilling into the enclosure will release metal shavings. Wear safety goggles and conduct the drilling in an area where you don't mind shavings flying around. Or better yet, you may want to have a friend hold a vacuum on the enclosure while drilling to prevent shavings from flying around. When drilling holes, first use a small drill bit to create a pilot hole. Then drill the hole using the step drill bit. To ensure you drill to the proper size, you may want to mark the step drill bit with a piece of tape above the desired size. Here are the sizes of holes that I drilled for each of the related components. Pause if you need to. 
Now let's move on to the electrical assembly part. The documentation required to install all components on the board and the information regarding wiring connections can be found on the Music Ding website. I will provide links in the description. There are three documents related to this treble booster kit. Number one, an inventory list summarizing all components. Number two, a wiring schematic. And number three, a documentation detailing the connection of the jacks, LED, and power input. Let us begin by going through the steps involving the installation of the resistors on the board. These little components you see here are the resistors. A total of eight resistors ship with the kit. To know which resistor goes where on the board, we must consult the schematic. In the schematic, all resistors are represented by the letter R. Each of the resistors on the schematic also indicate the resistor value. The resistor value can be determined by the color code on the resistor itself, but there is no need to decipher this as Music Ding provides the value on a little label on each of the resistors provided. Back to the schematic. Let us look at resistor number 1, which is designated as R1. In the schematic, it is located here and has a value of 100 R, or 100 ohms. The board itself also has a marker for resistor 1, or R1, and the location is here. Now that we have cross-referenced the schematic to the board, we now know where R1 is to be installed. To keep track of the resistors, I organize them on a sheet of paper as seen here. All components will be installed on the board on the white imprinted side. Soldering will take place on the reverse side. The resistors in this kit are not, repeat, not directional. This means that you can install the resistor in either direction on the board. When soldering a resistor onto the board, keep in mind that we are dealing with high temperatures, so be careful when using the soldering iron. Also be careful not to hold the iron too long on the board when soldering components to it as you may damage the board. A few seconds is all you will need. Let's show you how to solder R1 to the board. Like we said before, direction does not matter. The only critical thing is that you install the correct resistor to the proper location on the board. Bend the leads of the resistor and pass them through the respective holes on the board. Bend the leads again on the back of the board to hold the resistor in place. Now apply heat for a few seconds with a soldering iron. Then solder the resistor to the board at both of the leads. After this, trim the excess leads using a small set of snips. You have successfully soldered the first resistor to the board. Continue this process for the remaining resistors. There are a total of 8 in all. Once all resistors are installed, your board will look something like this. The next components to install are the capacitors. The kit comes with two kinds of capacitors, little square shaped capacitors and one cylindrical capacitor. If you want to get technical, the square capacitors are known as film capacitors, 
while the cylindrical one is an electrolytic capacitor. In total there are four capacitors to install on the board. Just as in the case with the resistors, the locations and values of the capacitors can be determined by referring to the schematic. The values of the capacitors are also indicated on the capacitors themselves. Here is a layout of the capacitors and their respective values. Like the resistors, the film capacitors are non-directional, so it does not matter which way they are installed. Installing the film capacitors is similar to that of the resistors. Insert them from the imprinted side of the board and solder them on from the other side. Do this for the other two film capacitors. The electrolytic capacitor is directional, so it must be installed in the proper orientation. This capacitor has both a negative and a positive lead. If you look at the board, C4, which is the location for the electrolytic capacitor, has a positive lead indicator. There are two ways of determining the positive and negative leads of the electrolytic capacitor. One method is by length. The longer lead is the positive and the shorter lead is the negative. The second way is that the negative lead is indicated by a side strip. Insert the capacitor on the board ensuring the positive lead matches the positive indicator on the board. Next, solder the capacitor in place. So now that we have the resistors and capacitors installed, let us refer back to the wiring diagram to see what is remaining. The kit provides you more than enough wire to complete this project. Do not worry about using the exact color of wire for this project. The color itself of the wires is not important. Just make sure that you make the actual connections as shown in this diagram. Notice the various wire connections on the board. Nothing difficult here, so go ahead and solder the leads to the board as shown in this diagram. When soldering the volume pot, make sure that you are aware of the specific connections from the board to the lugs. Take heed of the lead connection from the foot switch as well. Speaking of the foot switch, I am not sure if the orientation is specific, but I soldered the foot switch in the same direction as the diagram. Notice that the foot switch has some cross or bridge soldering. You can solder short pieces of wire leads to make these connections. Also be careful when soldering the input and output jacks. The jacks are not the same. The output jack has two soldering lugs while the input has three. Let us now turn our attention to the transistor. This is the transistor and this is the transistor socket. The socket will be soldered into the circuit board and the transistor will be inserted into the socket. I did not solder the transistor into the socket. The socket itself is not directional, so it can be installed in either direction. The critical point here is to insert it so that each of the socket pins connects to the C, B, and E, which stand for Collector Base Emitter. The transistor itself is directional. Notice how the transistor has a rounded edge and a flat edge. The circuit board location also has a rounded and flat edge. Make sure when inserting the transistor the geometry matches. An easy way to confirm this is to make sure that the rounded edge of the transistor faces the electrolytic capacitor. Next up let us look at the LED or light emitting diode. There are two leads a positive longer lead and a shorter negative lead. 
Be aware of this when soldering. The LED fits into the basil. Once you push the LED basil combo through the enclosure, only then should you solder the connections as that presents the opportunity for placement. Solder the LED leads to the wire leads. One from the foot switch and one from the circuit board. Be aware of the positive and negative leads of the LED. After soldering the LED, you may want to secure the bare connection with some heat shrink tubing. Next up is the DC power connector. Like the LED, this will also have to be soldered after inserting it through the enclosure hole. Be aware of the terminals on the connector. The largest terminal is negative and connects to the board ground. This is the positive terminal and connects to the positive 9 volt hole on the board. The remaining terminal connects to the red wire of the battery plug. Now you should have everything connected. The next step is to place the entire assembly into the enclosure. The circuit board is held in the enclosure by a pair of adhesive fasteners. Insert one fastener into each of the holes of the circuit board and stick it in. You may also want to place a piece of electrical tape on the enclosure for insulation. To hold the 9 volt battery in the enclosure, I use some paper binder clips and double sided tape. I had to trim the clips to size, but it worked. Well, here it is. Kinda looks messy, doesn't it? Ah, no biggie. This is not a beauty contest. I use some zip ties to tidy things up a bit. Hmm, not bad. Finally, attach the adhesive feet to the bottom of the enclosure and you are done. There you have it. A completed treble booster by Music Ding. For my treble booster, I painted it and added some decals using transparencies. I also gave it a good spray of clear coat afterwards. Be creative on how you want to decorate your pedal. Explore your space. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Part 2 will be up soon showing this pedal in action. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks to Music Ding for this awesome product.